can you guess what this change is? Let me know in the comments below. Is it a diet? Is it... No. It is... Welcome to those of you that are ready for the next chapter of life. Medical school. As we near closer to the first day of class, thoughts may begin filling up our minds. How do I best prepare? What do I do to get ready? So, that's what today's video is going to be all about. This will be a walkthrough guide on anything and everything related to study resources and strategies, as well as financials and the legality of moving. We'll get that all figured out. So, let's go. First, let's zoom out and talk motivation. Now, if you're like me, then you're not neurotic enough to start studying the Onking flashcards months before we even have our first lecture, but we can begin getting our minds right. And let's quickly recall back from our MCAT studying that there's terms like the mere exposure effect, priming, self-efficacy, and operant conditioning. All of these affect us to some degree or another, and we might as well use them to our benefit. So here's how I've chosen to do so. My goal is to be inspired and productive every time I go on my phone, for the hours each day that I'm on my phone, <laughs> and to evoke these feelings of inspiration and productivity. Here is what I've done. First, I use resources like Midjourney and Dream Engine to conjure up images that I personally vibe with. Whether it shows myself as a practicing physician, or it shows the home that we'd afford as neurosurgeons, <laughs> these tools are our oysters. So if you're following along, then find as many images as you want, and uh, definitely buy them and don't just screenshot them, put them into a pixel resizer and image enhancer and call it a day. Bruh. Anyways. Once we have a plethora of AI images, along with images from our camera rolls, then we can go over and download the Photo Widget app on the App Store. And this will allow you to pretty much do exactly as the name implies. You can organize photos from your camera roll and have them appear on your home screen at random intervals that you select. And you can categorize them into folders based on different niches or different projects you're working on or different themes you want to be implanting into your mind. Which looks great with the next step, which is using TickTick to track your to-do lists. As you've seen on my phone, I have unique to-do lists and images assigned to each particular area of my life. So now that I have my photo intervals set to change every 24 hours, I can now have my phone be a nice source for motivation while holding myself accountable to do my to-do lists. And lastly, you can throw in reminders on your home screen for that extra layer of external motivation. So now that our phones are in check, let's talk big picture study strategies to conquer the curriculum. Are you ready? Let me know in the comments below, what are your thoughts and what are your feelings at this point leading into enrollment? So since I haven't technically started any class and I'm sure that my study strategy is going to change as I'm actually in the depths of my lectures, I can for now start planning based on a general framework of pre-lecture, lecture, and post-lecture. And I've had my own plan based on recommendations from current students, random videos I've seen online and anywhere else, and I've also gotten recommendations from OpenAI's ChatGPT. So let's compare and contrast and see which ones match my goals and maybe yours as well. My initial plan for this pre-lecture phase is to first recognize what are the topics that are going to be taught in lectures for this upcoming week, and then go through the Anki Anki cards and identify based on tags which ones are associated to each lecture that I can plan out to be done each and every day, ideally before the lectures. And then also, what additional resources based on all of these different tools that are available and different study sources that are third party to our actual curriculum, which ones provide insight that could be useful? Having those links ready to go is something that will help us save time later down. Later down what? And as the last pre-lecture step, and something I wish I could have done all throughout undergrad, is at least use ChatGPT for that high-level overview of the upcoming lecture topic. Going in blinded by all this new information, that stuns us, and it makes that 50 minutes or however long the lecture is just go by in a snap or go by in a snooze, and we're trying to avoid that at all costs. So we'll have all of our links and flashcards identified and ready to go. And then perhaps we'll use ChatGPT to have some semblance of understanding before the lecture even begins. All so that we can rock and roll into the next phase, which is the actual lecture. And here, all we need to do is listen and actively jot down the emphasized points and any topics that are brought up that are not on the PowerPoint slides. Then we simply synthesize these notes in whatever way allows us to complete our pre-assigned Anki cards in ways that don't feel like rote memorization. Because I don't know about you, 
you know what? In fact, scratch that. I know about you that we are not here to have rote memorization throughout these four years of medical school. That is something for the past. We're leveling up. All right, let's take a pause and just recap everything up to this point. So we have our phones in check with our fun images, our awesome to-do lists, and overall just having that external motivation for the hours that we spend looking at our mobile devices. Next we have Anki, we've downloaded all of the flashcards from Anki, we have the add-ons, we have everything ready to go, we're rocking and rolling on that front. We have our iCloud notes, where we're actually going to be handling our to-do lists, and either that keeping those to ourselves or even collaborating with our classmates down the line, and we'll figure that out when the time comes. Then we have the third party resources where we don't necessarily have those bought and downloaded, but we have them in our minds. We have the financial implications of those and we know that the workflow is going to unravel before our very eyes and we're allowing that to happen. All right, so as I mentioned before, I fed this plan into ChatGPT and it recommended otherwise. So let's see what this robot has to say. All jokes aside, its strategy was actually fairly similar. Its one main difference was being the utilization of the top-down approaches earlier on in ideally the pre-lecture phase, where we create a traverse mind map based on our pre-lecture interpretations of the topic. So speaking of traverse, I've been meeting with my friend Raleigh, and we've been trying to figure out a way of forming a mind palace, and think of it of a mind map for everything that we're going to be learning in medical school. And even speaking that out loud sounds way more challenging and daunting than I thought it was to begin with, but uh, ultimately we're making some progress. Together, we've just been exploring different ways of organizing a mind map for each topic, each organ system, each etc. And here you can see we've kind of split it up between the central node of the organ and then some peripheral primary nodes like anatomy, pharmacology, clinical management, etc. And then each one of those has its own sub node if you will. And ultimately these can either include space repetition, questions, image occlusion, links, resources, pretty much anything that you can imagine. Overall, I do believe that there is a most efficient way of learning medicine. <laughs> and perhaps traverse and my mapping is it or is not it, but we're trying. If you want to join the journey of trying to figure this out, then let me know. We got a few more months before things really kick into gear and we're open to having weekly conversations. So hit me up in the comments below. So ChatGPT really didn't recommend any changes to the lecture, but post lecture, we'd be reviewing our notes, the lecture and any additional resources and organizing all of that into our traverse mind map. And then we complete the relevant Anki cards. And then after the unit is all completed, then that's when we incorporate the questions and we periodically review the study resources as needed, which echoes what I've heard before. What is the best time to start doing QBanks? I would start using practice questions as soon as you cover a topic in its entirety. Down the line, I'm interested in incorporating tools like Hippocratic AI, which helps with getting comfortable in a mock clinical setting, speaking directly with the patient. So throughout undergrad, I always used OneNote, and honestly, at this point, I feel like there's ways that we can level up from there. And perhaps Notion is the way to go, but honestly, I'm not really down to take notes on that and screenshot images. It's kind of funky for that. Uh, but that's where I'm introduced to RemNote, and I've been actually working with the team there. Uh, shout out to Moritz, and he's helping me overcome that higher learning curve and if you all are interested in trying to learn about how we can implement RemNote into our collective workflows then let me know we'll get into that. We've all likely heard of OpenAI's ChatGPT but there are even more innovations beyond just that that are actually applicable and tailored more specifically to our use case and one that we've all likely heard of before is Notion. I'm a fan of having some kind of home base on my computer and there I can do whatever one needs to do at a home base and recently in the past Notion has been my go-to for that. With inspiration from my peers, I've emulated their use of Notion in ways that encourage productivity as well as serving to be a showcase for what's been done. However, I've outgrown that which I currently have and I've been exploring other options. And let me tell you, there's a deep world to the Notion templates. From second brain to random past medical student templates offered on Gumroad, I've tried a whole bunch but either found them to have a higher learning curve than what I'm looking for or favor style over productivity. I've found some that work more for me than others, but I'm sure that these will change with time and especially as I actually begin school. If you want updates on how I'm going to continue molding my Notion home screen or home base or whatever you want to call it, then let me know in the comments below or reach out to me on any social media platform. 
And let me just give a meta point real quick about the actual browser I'm even using to organize my thoughts for this video for pretty much everything in my daily life. It's Arc Browser. It's definitely the most efficient and effective browser that I've personally ever used. And I've ditched Chrome to the side and I've kicked Brave to the corner. So uh, check out Brave or <laughs> check, so check out Arc if you are interested in that. That's enough with the study resources and strategies. Now let's turn our focus towards the ever looming topic of finances. Trust me when I say that the only way to take on that feeling associated with financial aid, with debt, with high costs of attendance is to take it head on. Because we're going to be doctors after all. Imagine you're in the emergency department and someone comes in with a heart attack or a stroke. What are you going to do? Are you going to beat around the bush, delay the inevitable, and be passive with your plan of approach? Use this time as experience getting more comfortable with the uncomfortable because that feeling is not going anywhere anytime soon. So what do I mean by that? Well, for one, let's get a real solid understanding of what our financial habits currently are. I've opted to use a Google Sheet template for this, which will be linked in the description, but track your monthly finances here, both income and expenses. You can, or at least should, be able to go back as far in tracking as you like, and the purpose here is to understand the categories in which you spend your money, as well as the amount that you're spending each month. How much of this is absolutely necessary? How much is going to be continuous throughout school? We all likely have technology subscriptions, groceries and gas we gotta afford. So first, track your habits now. Then, take the spending categories and figure out a budget for each. Now, sticking to that budget is a topic for another day, but now you'll have a sense of how much money you'll be able to spend on certain vices, activities, and needs on a monthly basis. And now that you know that there's gonna be a hole in your wallet for the foreseeable future, it's time to get paid. I recommend scanning your school website for any lists of scholarships, of grants, of anything that can get money into your account. And we all have the skills and ability to write personal statements and compose and convey ourselves accordingly, but feel inclined to use ChatGPT for help. Overall, we're each on our own grind for paying off our loans and thriving in this world. And if you're taking active steps and trying to become financially free as soon as possible, then hit me up and we'll talk. Finally, ChatGPT has helped clear the path forward for getting myself set up to move into a new state. So here's a list of to-do items that should be pretty much applicable for us all, regardless of the exact situation that we're in. So to wrap up, the plan seems to be that we are going to be identifying what information we're going to be thrown at in the week coming up. We're going to siphon that up into Anki cards, into third-party resources, into lecture materials. We'll have all of our software tools at our disposal, and we'll know what the workflow is when the time comes. And then we'll go into our lectures, we'll be jotting down notes, actively listening, questioning ourselves, and then we'll be synthesizing everything from both the top-down approach using Traverse or Miro or some kind of drawing tool, and then the bottom-up through Anki, filling in any gaps with question banks. We'll be having our financials in check, we'll know what we're spending, how much money's coming in, how much is going out, unfortunately, and overall, we'll be flourishing as medical students. And if you're motivated <laughs> by all this information, if you're eager to take on everything as it comes, then let me know, because I got a whole lot more to share. That honestly, if I go into it right now, then I might scare you away. You know what? Honestly, let's get into it. First, what I'm doing is